All right, so notes for today are going to be on the back of the worksheet we were just looking at. So this is the back of uh, worksheet three. Yep. And so these eight will be our examples. We may not even get to all of them, but we'll do enough of them until we figure out what's going on. And then today's assignment will be the next worksheet. So again, notes are graphing notes are a pain if you have to draw your own graph because especially on ones like this where you got one halves and one thirds that'll be going on. And so we threw in kind of an extra worksheet, not to give you extra work, but to take notes on. So let's do some notes at the top. Um, Uh, I think it'll be worth it to just write small and put the notes at the top to make things easy uh, and, and to keep everything kind of all in, all in one. Graphing logs. Well, how did we solve log equations yesterday or Monday? What did we do? Yeah, we, did, we didn't really solve log equations. We solved exponent equations. So we're going to do the same thing again today. So I hope you like doing the fish hook or at least understand the fish hook because that's going to come up today. And so we're really not going to graph x logs. I mean, we are graphing logs, but that's not the method we'll use. That's not how we're going to do it because we don't like messing with logs. We want to change everything to exponents, and then we'll, we'll be much better off, um, and we know how to graph exponents. And so we're going to turn this into what we did last week when we were graphing exponents. So it, there are a few extra steps because the fish hook is thrown in there, and that, that kind of messes things up. Um, so let's let's go for some steps here. I'm going to have <clears throat> one, two, three steps. Step one: solve for the log, meaning get the log thing by itself. Well, like number 19 and number 20, it's already done for you. On 21, we'd have to do a little bit of work to get log by itself. In fact, let's go ahead and do that on number 21. Let's go one step at a time here. So if we want to get the log by itself, it's not just the log. It's log of whatever we're taking the log of. So I need to get the log of x by itself. So let's add 2 to the other side. And then divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1 or just change all the signs, however you want to phrase that. And now we've got the log by itself on 21. So the log and what we're taking the log of. Maybe you should say the log of the thing by itself. I don't know what the thing is, but... You can't get the log by itself. So you get here, it's not like you can divide both sides by x to get log by itself. That doesn't make sense. Log is like square root. You can't get square root by itself. you got to take the square root of something. Same thing here. You're taking the log of something. Once that thing is by itself, then we can fish hook into an exponent. I don't know if there's a better way to say that, but basically use our fish hook thing to turn it into an exponent problem instead of a log problem. Right? We don't really like logs, so we just change everything into exponents. So on number 19, start at the base. Oh, this is a little bit of a backwards fish hook, meaning I got to loop the other way than I'm used to, but it's still a fish hook. So 3 to the y equals x. to the y equals x. Uh, try to leave some room right there because that's where we're going to make our table. Why don't you fish hook number 20 and 21 and see what you get and then we'll, we'll see where we stand after step 2. So fish hook 20 and 21. Number 20, start at the base, fish hook around, 3 to the y equals x plus 3. Number 21, fish hook around, 3 to the negative y minus 2 
equals x. Question, Natalie? Good? Okay. Everybody else good? Fish hook them around. And then lastly, this is going to feel a little bit weird because it's backwards from what we normally do, but we're going to solve for x. <clears throat> Logs and exponents are backwards. They're inverses, meaning their x and y's are switched around. So it kind of makes sense maybe that we would need to solve for x. So we need to get x by itself. Well, number 19, we're fine. It's already by itself. Number 20, well, I need to move the 3 over. Be careful how you write this. Make sure you're neat because the y is the exponent. The minus 3 is not the exponent. Okay, so don't get sloppy and end up with subtracting 3 into the exponent. That wouldn't be right. And I know you know that, but if, you, if your handwriting is, is messy or if you're writing really small and you're trying to squeeze it in and you end up sticking it kind of in the wrong spot, you can, you can mess yourself up. On well, number 21, to solve for x, oh, it's already done for us. So I guess I say you always have to do step number two. Step number one and three, depending on the problem, you may not have to do. It may already be done for you. It's a better way to say that. Um, I said it would be three steps. I lied. It's four steps. Graph with a table. But that's how we graphed earlier. So we're going to do a, a table of values. Now, what was different about our table of values when we graphed with exponents? It had three columns. What was the third column? Exponent. We're going to do that again, but be careful before you write it down. Which variable is now in my exponent? Y, you look at the three that we kind of work in parallel here, the Y is always the exponent. So I'm going to have a third column again. It's going to be the exponent again. But I'm going to stick it next to the Y column because the exponent is always the Y stuff. And then, like last time, my exponent's always going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. I'm going to force that to be the case. So I'm going to pick my, here's another place where things get backwards. Looking at this equation, I don't really want to pick the x values because then I've got to really be smart about what y is. Instead, I'm just going to pick the y values. So graphing exponents is better than graphing logs, but the price is that x and y have traded places and we just need to be real careful about that as we work these. I mean, everything's the same, except that x and y are kind of backwards. So this one's a parent function, so I don't have to worry about uh, you know, adjusting what y is based on that exponent. So negative 1, 0, and 1 are still, still good for the exponent, good for y. And then I'll plug them in. Again, it feels weird because usually we pick our x's, plug them into y, and then see what we get. Now it's a little bit backwards. Uh, we're picking our y's. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. These values are all going to look the same because it's, it's still exponents. 3 to the 0 is 1. And 3 to the 1 is 3. So let's plot those points. Again, the 1 third is a little bit tricky, but we just guess on where 1 third is. Not guess. I mean, we know where it is. We just put it on the graph as best we can. So over a third, down one. One, zero. Three, one. Uh, I think like we did on the other one, let's do... Those are the three key points. If you keep going... Your next point would be 9, 2. Again, we don't have to do that one, but that one helps us see what the graph looks like. On the other side, if we plugged in negative 2, we get 1 ninth. 
So it's almost like we're getting closer and closer to x equals 0. That sounds like a math word waiting in the background there, getting closer and closer to something. That's what a graph looks like. Remember that x and y changed places. Domain is x, range is y. That's still true, but it's like the things have been swished around, but that's because the x and the y have changed places. So domain, reading it from left to right, looks like it starts at 0, goes to infinity. Oh, I should be careful how I phrase that. It doesn't start at 0, right? It starts just to the right of 0. So we don't want to include 0. It gets closer and closer to 0. Speaking of that, closer and closer to 0, jump ahead and do the asymptote, x equals 0. While we're here, I'll, for exponent graphs, you might remember that range and asymptote went together. But because we switched x and y, now domain and asymptote go together. Range would be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So if you can graph exponents, then you can graph logs. You just have to pay a little bit of price up front in terms of switching the x and the y around. Let's look at number 20. Again, three columns. x and y and exponent. This time I'm putting exponent with y because I'll be picking y. Or y is in the exponent, maybe is a better way to say it. Exponent's always going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. Um, for this exponent, my y just needs to be negative 1, 0, and 1. So that's an easy one. All right, 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. Some people get messed up with fractions. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 1 third minus 3. Be negative for sure. Negative two and two thirds. Again, you'll have a calculator, so if if, if messing with fractions is troublesome for you, then use the calculator. If we plug in zero, three to the zero is one. One minus three is negative two. If we plug in one. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Again, we, we've done all the hard work. Now we're just plugging in numbers, putting points. Like this is the supposed to be the easy part now. So negative 2 and 2 thirds, comma negative 1. Negative 2, 0, and 0, 1. Again, kind of like with exponents, the reason we we pick these three key points is it, it captures the turn. Logs and exponents have a sharp turn and if you're not careful what values you pick you end up with three values way out here or three values way down here. Let's see, domain uh, looks like it starts at negative three Well, that's not quite right. You've got to work on how I say that. It starts just to the right of negative 3. It doesn't get to negative 3. It gets closer and closer to negative 3. And as soon as I say something like that, my brain should link that to asymptote, right? Getting closer and closer, but not getting there. So an asymptote at x equals negative 3. And then range goes all the way down. and It goes up really slowly, but it does eventually go all the way up negative infinity to infinity. Uh, translation. Again, you, some people will do these at the very beginning and let, the, let the, the transformation sort of guide their work. Other people will just wait till the end and kind of use it as a check. 
But if it's x plus 3, that would mean left 3. And yeah, sure enough, this thing's been shifted to the left by 3. Questions on that one? All right, 21. 21, our exponent's a little bit weird, so we're going to have to be careful with what we pick as y. Again, the exponent column is always negative 1, 0, and 1. I always want to put it next to whatever has the exponent, and then I'll pick that y value to make the x value happen. Oh, this one's tricky with the negatives in there. How about, let's do the zero first, right? If you're, if you're stuck on figuring these out, usually the zero is the easiest one. So what value of y would make the exponent equal to zero? Yeah, be careful. If you try two, that's an okay first guess, but then negative two minus two is negative four. But whoops, let's try negative two. So then I got negative negative 2, which is positive 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. Maybe we should jump to 1, because usually 1 is the second easiest one to find. So what value of y would make the exponent be 1? Negative 3. If you're having trouble with that, you can make it into a, a full-on equation here. Right? I want the exponent to be 1, so I'll write exponent equals 1, and then if I move things around, I get negative 3. And then you got enough of a pattern that I'm guessing y equals negative 1 would give me an exponent of negative 1. So we'll plug those in. The good news is if we plug in negative 1, we already know what the exponent's going to be. It's going to be negative 1. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. If I plug in negative 2 for y, we already know the exponent's going to be 0. 3 to the 0 is 1. And if we plug in negative 3 for y, we know the exponent's going to be 1. 3 to the first is 3. So let's plug these in and see what happens. Or let's graph these points and see what it looks like. So over one, or over one third, down one. Over one, down two. And over three, down negative three. Well, this is looking different than those other, than the first two. What's going on here? Why is this one looking different? What do you mean by it's turned? <laughs> well, I would like a better word. Flipped. And maybe that's what you mean, but it's flipped over. And we maybe this would have been a good one to do the transformations at the beginning. Because that negative sign out there flips it over. And then the minus 2 would be down 2. And so maybe that makes a little more sense and matches up with normally it looks like 19 and 20, but this one's upside down because of the minus sign. Something like that. Domain is the x values. It looks like they get closer and closer to zero and head off to infinity. Speaking of getting closer and closer to zero, that sounds like asymptote talk. So x equals zero. And the range goes forever up and forever down.
questions on 21? All right, let's do 22. Let's do 22 together. So tell me what's first. What do I need to do first in 22? Move the 4 over. So y minus 4 equals log base 3 of x minus 2. What do you want to do next? Yeah, now I'm ready to do the fish hook thing. Okay. Because that's doing the fish hook is how we get rid of the log. We're ready to get rid of the log, so let's fish hook. So start at the base, loop to the other side. Uh, we got chunks of stuff in places, but that's fine. So it's still just 3 to that chunk of stuff, y minus 4, equals this other chunk of stuff, x minus 2. All right, that's the key step to the whole problem, because now it's not a log problem anymore. It's an exponent problem. But Isaiah, I have one more thing to do. What do you want to do? No clue. Okay, look back at your notes and look at, tell me what step number three was. Solve for x. So how can I solve for x on this one? Move the two over. Move the two over. Uh, and again, be careful moving the two over. I don't want to move it over and have it land in the exponent. So be very careful how you write these so that it's clear you know, who's, who's up top with the exponent and who's kind of on the main level. Now we're ready to do our three column table of values. Exponent column is always the same. Why don't you try to take it from here? I think you can do that. We've done enough of these. So take it from there, and I'll, I'll come back and I'll uh, post the answer in a moment. So hopefully your answer looks something like that. Um, again, you had to pick the y's correctly, plug them in to get x values, plot the points, and then from the picture you can come up with all the other stuff. It's maybe jumping ahead a little bit, but for exponents, the, the asymptote was always a y thing. For logs, it's always an x thing. So it's sort of whatever's in there with x is how you figure out what the, what the asymptote is. That's, that's not necessary to know, but that's one of those extra things that if you make the connection, it can provide a little bit of a check for you as you go. Let's see, 23 is just a straightforward problem. So let's jump to, let's do one more together off of this. You got a preference? You know what, I'm going to make a preference. I'm going to make the call. Because I know what's on the test, so I know what we should prepare for. There's a hint. Let's look at number 26. If it helps, see some people do this. The log is what I'm trying to get by itself first. Then I'll do the loop de loop fish hook thingy to get to undo the log. But first I gotta get that chunk by itself. So what should I do to accomplish that? What should I do first to start to get this red piece by itself? So let's move the 3 over. Some of you can do both steps at once, and that would save you some space, some much needed space. Uh, I'll do it at once. So I'll move the 3 over. After I move the 3 over, what should I do? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Good. So you want, everybody can do that. Save themselves a little bit of algebra. Or not save them algebra, save them space. Just not just doing two steps at once. So subtract the... Whoops. Yeah, no wonder you're looking at me funny. And this is why we don't skip steps. Subtract the 3 
and divide by 2, just like you said we should. Now we're ready to undo the log, which means the, the loop-de-loop -loop thing. Um, I'll just write domain somewhere else. So 2 to the y minus 3 over 2 equals x. So this one's going to be a little bit extra tricky on figuring out where figuring out what y values will give me those exponents so do the zero first what value of y would make the exponent zero what value of y would make the exponent zero three Uh, again, I'm going to go in a, in a wacky order because I think it's the easiest order. So finding 3 wasn't too bad. What value of y should we pick to make our exponent equal 1? 5, five yeah. Again, if that's, a, if that's troublesome for you, then come down here and do y minus 3 over 2 equals 1. Move things around. Eventually you get 5. And then maybe there's enough of a pattern. Maybe you need to figure it out. But if we do y equals 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Divided by 2 is negative 1. So now we need to plug these in. But again, we, we've kind of already plugged them in because we know what the exponent is going to be. 2 to the negative 1, 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. And 2 to the 1. So we we'll plot our points. The graph looks a little bit different than the others. How would you say it looks different than the other three we've done? Well, it looks like there's a stretch. Yeah, I'd say so. That too meant that there was a stretch. So again, if you can do the transformation thing first and let it help you with the graph, or you can do the graph first and let it help you with the transformation. Either way. And then that plus 3 is up 3. So we're on the, the downhill run for this problem now. Something like that. Uh, domain 0 to infinity asymptote x equals 0 again those kind of go together range negative infinity to infinity all right your assignment is the next page unit 5 worksheet 4 with Miss Morris's uh, handwriting up there um, your job is that assignment. Uh, there's a little bit more room over there. It does say identify the domain and range of each. Um, I would say add the asymptote as well. Um, there's a little bit more room to work. It's not quite as squeezed as that last page. Yeah, there's fewer graphs per page, so you should have room to, to work on those. At some point, I will work some of those and post the answers so that you can check them. Um, but we'll go over some of them tomorrow as well. By the way, I, in my mind, this is the hardest of the lessons. I think we start going downhill in terms of difficulty after this one. So for whatever that's worth, this is sort of uh, the peak difficulty level of this unit. <laughs>